what is up you all welcome back to my channel or if you're new here welcome my name is Jane and today as you can tell by the title I'm going to be telling you all my infertility story everything from diagnosis to the visits um, chances of conceiving all of those details I'm going to give you all in today's video it's hard to talk about it I have never told the story like fully through the people who have uh, known what I'm going through they've been there from the beginning so I've just updated them throughout my journey you know throughout each appointment I've never sat down and actually told the full story until last night when I filmed this video three times but when I went to edit the footage it's just too overwhelming and it makes me very emotional to like hear it back so I'm going to edit this video as little as possible in April of 2021 so April of last year I went to my OBGYN and I got um some abdominal scans done so I had the abdominal ultrasound and then I also had the transvaginal ultrasound done and got a bunch of pictures taken of course the ultrasound tech could not tell me anything just within the next two weeks I would probably have my results back two weeks later I ended up calling the OB because I had not gotten my results back. Usually, I do want to mention I am a very anxious person. For some reason, though, I was not very anxious about this. I don't know if God just decided to give me the month off because he knew what last year was going to entail, or I don't know. You start to think and stress yourself out. What could be going on? Why haven't they called me? Is something wrong? That's usually what I do. For some reason... Two weeks, I had not gotten the phone call and I didn't even worry about it. I actually realized a couple days later, like, oh crap, I should probably call the OB. A month later, I finally got my results from my OBGYN. The doctor called. He let me know that they could not say 100% that I had a unicrate uterus. I don't know if this was for legal reasons. I assume so because they told me that they were 99% sure, but they couldn't diagnose me. I had to see a fertility specialist in order to be diagnosed with it. So, I assume for legal reasons, maybe they couldn't just straight up tell me I had it because for whatever reasons. I was 60 miles from home, so I wasn't near my mom or anybody, but they called me to let me know that I could have a unicrate uterus. It appeared that I had a unicrate uterus. They would need me to see a fertility specialist to get 100% diagnosis of that, but from all of the images, there was over, I think they said like 20 pictures they had and there was no sign at all that I had the right side of my uterus. All they could see was the left side. They did not see a right fallopian tube. They did not see anything on the right side. Um, they told me that as far as treatments or things, they were at a loss really. They weren't for sure on what was supposed to happen next. That's why they were sending me to a fertility specialist if I wanted to do so. So before I continue with the story, I'm going to put a picture right here. This is what a normal uterus would look like. Here is a picture of what a unicrate uterus looks like. This happens when you are in vitro. So while you are still in the womb. So while I was still in the womb, for whatever reason, the um, my body just didn't form the other half of my uterus. So that's what I'd been told as of May of 2021. So that day, emotional wise, I got off the phone with the doctor. They told me that this could cause a lot of things like preterm labor. You would be high risk pregnancy. Um, you are very high risk to have a miscarriage. You are high risk of losing your child even at birth. So it was a lot to take in. Like within a 10 minute phone call, I was getting thrown a lot of information. I was scared. I was a 20 year old who had always dreamed of becoming a mom, finding out that that very well may be a huge struggle for me. I may not see that day of having children naturally uh, like I'd always thought that I would. So I called my mom and I remember crying and telling her that, you know, it's not for sure, I don't guess. So there's that chance, but they don't even see a hint of the right side of my uterus. I told her everything that the doctor said. Um, the live birth rate's 50%, so there's 50% that you won't deliver a live baby. The miscarriage um, risk, the risk of carrying to full term and preterm labor and just all these different things. And I told her and she told me, you know, I love you. I support you. I'm here for you. 
me and your dad will do whatever we can to help you. That is something I'm very grateful for that I have a huge family and they are all very supportive and they are all very loving and kind and I can't thank them enough for the support that they give me. However, I do struggle with a lot of times you just feel lonely. During uh, my infertility journey, there's a lot of nights that you just feel lonely. I have amazing family and friends, an amazing support system, an amazing husband. But at the same time, at some points, you just feel like no one gets it. And you are just all alone in the way that you feel. I have a whole video here on my channel of it. And I won't speak too much on it in this video. But I'll have it linked below if you want to check it out. That would maybe help you understand this part of my emotions a little bit better. But I was adopted. So I my um, biological family, I have no contact with them. They were very bad people. Um, they were abusive, neglectful. They wouldn't feed us. Um, just a lot of abuse all around to me and my siblings. So we were adopted. So I'm very blessed for that. But I remember I told my mom on the phone, it killed me that, I won't say her name, but that my biological mom could have five kids. She didn't want any of us. She didn't love any of us. She didn't care about any of us. And God let her have five kids. And here I am. I would give my kids the world and I'm finding out that I possibly could never carry a baby on my own. I'm 100% okay with adoption. Junior, my husband, is 100% okay with adoption. I used to be that person, too, that would say when people couldn't have kids. I would never say this to anybody. Granted, people are, you know, it's hard to understand until you're in the situation. I see that now. But it still hurts from my point of view as a woman. It I started to feel less than. I started to feel like I was less of a woman because of the chance that my body couldn't do what it's supposed to do. And that was hard for me. So that's where I'm coming from with these emotions. I still struggle with the fact that my biological mother was able to have kids like it was no problem. About three or four days later, my OB called me again and sent me a referral to a fertility specialist. I got that referral and my appointment was scheduled for June of 2021. So, a month before my 21st birthday, I went to the fertility clinic with my mom. She went with me. So glad because she asked way more questions than I did. I literally just kind of sat there. I was in shock, I think. From May to June, I remember praying to God and begging him in bed every night that I would just go to this appointment in June. Somehow, some way, I would have all of my uterus, like both sides, left and right side are there, left and right tubes there. You're perfect, good to go. We went in and he wanted to do scans of his own. While he was doing the abdominal ultrasound, he immediately within, I don't know, maybe five to eight seconds of putting, what is that, like the Doppler? He was like, yeah, I see no uterus. You definitely have a unicrate uterus. We go back to his office and sit and talk. We went over what that would mean for my future of having children. There was talk of IUI because he did not want me at that time trying to conceive naturally. He wanted it to be through IUI. Three or four months of IUI. If that failed, no pregnancies, then we would do IVF for three to four months. Whenever I decided I wanted to have kids, that would be the plan. So, there was talk of Clomid too, like being on Clomid during the IUI treatments and stuff like that. There was talk of high risk pregnancies. With the Unicrate uterus, I would be high risk 10 weeks for miscarriage. Then from 10 weeks to 20 weeks, I would still be high risk for um, miscarriage. There's another word they use for it. I would still be high risk for losing the baby from 10 to 20 weeks. I would be high risk for preterm labor. As Unicrate uterus is so rare. There's not a lot of studies on it. There's not a lot of research. My fertility specialist knows some about it, but even he has told me that, you know, no one really knows a lot about it. So there's a lot of unknown and uncertainty. That is scary in of, in of itself. So that was a lot to process. There was talk that I may have endometriosis because I had a lot of the symptoms of um, having endometriosis. So there was talk of, I think it's a laparoscopy, scopy, however you say that. I don't know how to say that word. But there was talk of him doing that procedure to see if I had endo, diagnosing me with it. And if I did, he would go ahead and treat it while in surgery. I made an appointment um, for November of 2021. And in November, I had a laparoscopy, how, however you say that. I had a surgery done to see if I had endometriosis. I got diagnosed with endometriosis while in surgery. Uh, my doctor did remove the endometriosis 
And while in surgery, to his surprise, he told my mom that he was very surprised. He was not expecting it. But while in surgery, my doctor actually found that I do have the right side of my uterus. So my right tube does not work. Um, it will not like release eggs or anything like that. The right side of my uterus, pretty much the right side just doesn't work. It doesn't do what it's supposed to do. So still the same diagnosis. The right side is very, very small. I don't know if I mentioned that or not, but that's the issue. The right side is so very small. After my surgery, my fertility specialist agreed that it would be okay for me to um, try naturally. So that was very good news. So Junior and I got the news in November that if we wanted to, we would be able to try naturally for children for like three to four months. So that was very good news because as I mentioned earlier, I was told at first that I did not need to try naturally. Got a prescription to start Clomid and I will be doing, I will be using Clomid. Even though we're trying naturally, I'm taking a Clomid prescription because of other reasons. My doctor does believe that I don't ovulate. I don't know if I worded that correctly. It's pretty much where we're at now. It is now January of 2022. Um, and I am way more positive than I was May of last year to now I'm in a whole different headspace. So I don't know if I explained this very well, but women who struggle with endometriosis, a lot of times if you get the procedure and get it cleaned out, it will, um, I'm not sure I'm gonna word this correctly, but it allows you within the three to four months, your levels, your hormones are leveling out. You'll um, be more likely to conceive within that three to four months after the procedure. Hopefully within the next three to four months, I will be pregnant and we will conceive. I'm obviously nervous and a little scared of what's to come, but I'm very optimistic and I am trying my best to um, stay in a positive headspace. I'm sorry if the video is all over the place or if um, I'm like was touching my hair and stuff. I'm very anxious about letting this video be on the internet. So um, please be kind in the comments. Um, I don't think anybody will be rude, but I don't know. If you all have any questions or anything, I'll try my best to answer them in the comments or like in the next vlog. So yeah, I will um, leave it at that, I guess, for today. Thank you all for listening. I was going to say I hope you enjoyed, but this probably wasn't a very enjoyable video. But anyways, thank you all so much for watching and listening to my story and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye guys.